Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and Celebrity Interviews live from the Grotto with Greg Hanna. Greg, what's going on, man? How are you? I am doing fantastic, Neil. How are you? Good, good. For your Boston fans, especially, you know, your business located in the Boston region, they got to be a huge fan of our guest today. So New England Patriots all-star legend, Tony Collins. Tony, thanks for stopping by, man. And how about when you were part of the 80 run, you never thought that there'd be this dynasty with the Patriots, right? Did you ever think that, you know, going through working the way you work to get to the certain point, which is the Super Bowl, and then later on see the dynasty, which the Patriots end up creating? I mean, it was it was a lot of fun watching it. I tell you, uh, watching Brady do his thing. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, it, you never know what, what's going to happen. And uh, the, the, the years that I was there, uh, my my rookie season, we were two and fourteen. So, <laughs> so, and and then in you know my my third fourth year, we make it to the Super Bowl. So, um, a lot of people don't know that we were the first New England Pat- Patriot team to go to a Super Bowl. But uh, it, it's just incredible to see the dynasty that it is, and hopefully we can get it back running again. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so well, that, that's amazing. Yeah, so <laughs> so Greg, does. you will start out, Greg, with just finding out. Do you always want to be a football player, Tony? Is that something growing up you want to be a football player? Oh, uh, man. So I'm from a, b- a big family. I don't know if you know how how many. Uh, I'm from a family of sixteen, and so oh, wow. I, I have nine nine brothers. There was nine boys and seven girls, and all the boys we all played sports. My father uh, actually uh, played in the Negro League, so we all played baseball. Uh, we all played football. We all played basketball, but our our, our main uh, sport was football. And so every everybody in the family played football. And, uh, grew up in a, a small town in upstate New York. <laughs> I'll tell you how I got there later. So what but, small uh, town in upstate New York? Because my dad grew up in Scroon Lake, uh, Pinyan, outside of Rochester. Okay, <laughs> on Cuca Lake. It's about it's about it's about an hour uh, hour south of Rochester, New York. Okay. Yeah, so that's where I grew up at, and uh, we just just created a kind of a, a little small, 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 small town. Uh, so we were number one uh, uh, state champion, small school, uh, my senior year. But it, it was even before that, my brothers played there, and you know, they, it was like a dynasty for us. <laughs> so it, it, every, everybody knew Pinyan was a was a football town because of the Collins family, and so. Uh, uh, it, it was pretty cool growing up in, in that little small town. Oh, that's great. What, when did you know that you were going to be in the NFL? When did you decide that was going to happen? <laughs> uh, okay, so I think I was like nine years old. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I uh, I go to my mom and I tell my mom, and I, I tell this to, uh, I, I used to tell to a lot of kids, I, I don't speak as much as I used to. Um, your words have power. And so I went to my mom and I told my mom, I said, I said, mom, I am going to play in the NFL at nine years old. And, uh, and my mom said, son, you can do anything you want to do if you put your mind to it. And from that moment on, man, I, I, I it's hard to, to explain or how to make somebody believe it. I knew at nine years old that I was going to play in the NFL because my mom said I could do it. <laughs> See, Tony, that's sometimes the only thing we need is somebody to be behind us believing in us. Yes, that's, that's it. It's so if you don't have people believing in, in you, you kind of really, that's the big thing. It's so much mindset when you have talent because if people are telling you, yeah, you can't, I remember when I was a professional wrestler and because I was a big guy, I wasn't, you know, as well polished in the ring, but I had a good size and everything. The the guys would just say, yeah, you're never going to go to the big time and all these different things. And you listen to these naysayers. I came close to the WWE. I wrestled once in the WWE against Crush and Savia Vega, but I never, you know, reached the pinnacle, went overseas, but I allow people's at my young age mindset Hearing this, how much are you are you glad you had people around you that supported you? Because you see athletes today that if they didn't have that support, you wouldn't get to where you are. 
Uh, it was it was tremendous for me. And see, here here's the thing about me. I had, I had my older brothers. Uh, I was I was number seven out of the out of the nine boys, and so I had a lot of older brothers to look up to, and and they all play football. Actually, I wasn't the best football player out of that, come out of that, out of them boys. <laughs> so uh, I had a brother who started freshman on varsity. No one ever starts freshman in Pinyan on varsity. So he did. And so and here's the here's the key to that to that thing for me. Uh so my my older brother started on varsity. His name was Morris, his freshman year in high school. And so that was my goal, man. You know, that was all I wanted to do is make sure I start on varsity my freshman year like my brother Morris. And uh, I didn't make the team. <laughs> <laughs> I I did not make varsity. And uh, I know you hear the Michael Jordan story, but it, it was just like that. I I worked my butt off, man. I was so disappointed, and I never want I never wanted to feel that way again. And so I I just I, I was I was really a fanatic. Um, I'm to be totally honest with you, I took it to another level. <laughs> I used to run hills. I used to run stadium steps. I'm I'm, I'm in the ninth grade, man. Everybody think I'm crazy. <laughs> But uh, I just took it to a whole nother level. And uh, my, my sophomore year, I went out for the team. And, and of course, I made it. And uh, the rest is history for Pinyan, you know. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, and what was the what was the next stop after high school? What what happened next? Actually, we went to uh, East Carolina University. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy how I got to East Carolina University. So my uh, senior year in high school, you, you get five official visits. And so... Um, uh, I had visited Syracuse, uh, schools close to cl close to the area where I can drive to, and I, and I got a visit to the University of Florida. So I'm I'm in upstate New York. So now I get a chance to go to University of Florida on a visit, and I'm really excited. Now you got to also understand, I've never been on an airplane before. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're from a family of sixteen, you don't travel on airplanes a lot. So. Uh, I've never been on an airplane before, and I was so excited about getting on this airplane and going and visit the University of Florida. Uh, got on the airplane, got down there, man, everything was just perfect. Um, Ping Yang Academy colors are orange and blue. Florida's orange and blue. Um, I mean, everything just went perfect. Um, uh, I signed a letter of intent. I'm going to University of Florida. That was my fourth visit. So everything is, is fine. I, I come back home. I get a call from Pat Dye. I don't know if you remember Pat Dye. He coached at Auburn. Okay, uh, I remember. Mm -hmm. Coach Bo Jackson. He was at East Carolina. Then. Oh, okay. So, so Pat Dye calls me up on the phone. He, he says, uh, we see you have one more visit to take. Would you like to come to East Carolina? I never heard of East Carolina before. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but my first question to him, I said, are you going to fly me now? And he says, yeah, we'll, we'll fly you now. So I get to get on the airplane, uh, the second trip on the airplane, uh, my second in two weeks. So I was excited about going on an airplane. And I had no intentions of going to East Carolina University. None. I didn't even, it wasn't even a question. I'm going to University of Florida. I'm just going for the visit to have, have a good time. And so uh, I get down there <clears throat> and Pat Dye says this to me. He says, son, if you come here, you'll get an opportunity to, to play and you get an opportunity to play in the NFL. And he changed my mind. Yeah. Um, the coach at Florida, I, I think it was Dickie. I'm not really sure what coach it was. But he said I might get redshirted my freshman year. And I didn't know too much about redshirting. But Pat Dye said, if I come there, I get an opportunity to play. And I get an opportunity to play in the NFL. And I remember to this day, my father said, I heard of, I heard of North Carolina and I heard of South Carolina. But where in the hell is East Carolina? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even on the map, man. And, and that was that was Pat. That was the reason I went to East Carolina, and you know the rest is history for that too. I'm um, I'm in uh, had a had a great career at ECU, and uh, and you know really making my dreams come true and being drafted by the New England Patriots in the second round. Phenomenal. So how did you get through the winters up here? You know, I've lived here my whole life. I've always been threatening to move to Florida, to California, to North Carolina, but I'm still here. So See, how did you thing, get through it? 
I'm, 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 I grew up in the snow and I wanted to get away from the snow. That was one of the reasons I, I went, I was going to go to Florida. And so, uh, and, and then, then when I get drafted by New England, I'm like, oh my God, I got to go back to the snow again. So uh, you, you, you kind of get used to it. You never get used to snowing, uh, snowing the driveway, plowing the driveway and all that. I don't know how you guys do it, man. Uh, you know, more power to you to stay up there. I, I'm still friends with Roland James and, and Ronnie LaFette. Those guys still live up there. Lip and <laughs> they're from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know why Lip stays up there, but he still stays up there, you know. So more power to him. I, I like the warm weather. Uh, feel, feels good on my bones and my aching knees. <laughs> you know, and and that, that's the thing. And but playing in Foxborough, that's crazy, right? The home field advantage you had playing there. Oh uh, yeah, and, and, see, yeah. And, and see when we played, we our, our turf. I mean, the turf that they have now is like. You know, it's like a almost like a, a, a walking on a, a, a bed compared to what we had. I mean, we had that hard turf. I mean, it was it was cement underneath the turf. That, that's what we were. That's what we were running on. But the thing about it was that the, the home that 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 home field advantage, especially in the snow. Uh, we we like to play Miami in the snow and have teams come and 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 doing the, uh, doing, the, doing, the, doing those winter weathers. And it was an advantage for us. And, you know, being a running back, and I, I really don't like running in the snow or running in the rain, but it was to our advantage to to have uh, that home field. Wow. So, you know, 1985, you're, you're playing in the Super Bowl. <laughs> what, what were you thinking to yourself, you know, when, when you're going out on the field for the first time? On the well, game? You know, it, it's, it's like a dream come true. You you dream about it for, uh, as, a ki- as a kid and, and now you got an opportunity to play in it. It, it was it was pretty special, um, you know. The, even the week before, with all the uh, attention from the media and different things like that, is it's just an, uh, incredible how it was. Everything that I thought it would be, uh, except the turnout. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it was. I think our thing at, at '85, our team, we had a we had a fantastic team. Um, uh, we were on the road uh, to New York the first game. Uh, then we went out to L.A. to beat L.A. And no one thought we were going to um, beat Miami in Miami. I don't think we won a game down there in <clears throat> probably 20-some years. I can't remember. But it, it had been a long time since we won a game in Miami. And so, and everybody wanted Miami and, and the Chicago Bears to play because at, at that year Miami was the only team to beat Chicago in the regular season. So everybody thought that was going to be the matchup for the Super Bowl, except us. <laughs> and so uh, it, it was it was a it was a super ride getting there. Uh, but, you know, you know, once we got there, it, it was great. But once the game was over, it wasn't so great because we didn't play to our capabilities. And uh, it, but it was fun getting there. <laughs> and did you think that year that you guys were going to get to the Super Bowl? You know, you. you like I said, my, my 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 rookie season, we we were two and fourteen, and uh, and Raymond Barry came in my my third year. I think he, Raymond came in in eighty four, uh, and 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 I I, I got to give it to Raymond Barry. He really turned that that that, that team around because uh, we he started making us believe that we could win. Because my rookie season, man, we were, I remember us playing games and and I mean we're we're actually winning a game and we're looking at each other because we've lost so many games. We're wondering how we're going to lose this game. And, and you know, we, we went two and 14 that year, but uh, Ron Myers came in, he did, he did a great job. But when Raymond came in, he just took us to a whole nother level uh, because he made us believe that we could win. And and, and that was the whole key to that. Uh, yeah. We, we, uh, 84, he came in, he came in uh, half of the season and so the 85 season, the beginning of 85, go all the way through training camp, man, we, we had, we had a, a, a unbelievable a team. Uh, we had some great players. We had great defense. Uh, I don't know how many turnovers we, we created that year, but we created a whole lot. And it was all because of Raymond Berry and having us believing that, that we can win. We had no doubt. Uh, we, you know, going into the Super Bowl, I thought we were going to win the Super Bowl because no one believed we were going to do it. But uh, Chicago had one of the best defense that that year and uh, put put us uh, <laughs> put us in our place that uh, when we <laughs> got down. <there. laughs> 
so Tony, do, do, does the Patriots have like reunions, like old teams? Can they, oh yeah, teams I mean, get together I think and... we, we we've had a reunion, the the Super eighty five reunion, and the, 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 I think the biggest thing now for me with with the Patriots and what they do is with the uh, with the alumni, uh, they have us come back up and uh, we sign autographs at uh, beginning beginning of the game and then at halftime and the the thing <clears throat> the thing about the NFL, I tell I tell my sons. That one of the things that I miss the most is the camaraderie with the fellas, you know. And so, you know, you get a chance to see some of the guys that you played with and uh, you went to battle with, and, and that that's what's that what makes it really cool to, to do that. So, I got to give New England their props. They they have us come back and uh, get get a chance to see the other guys because you know I know the guys that live up there. <laughs> they they they're up there, but it's it's not a whole lot of guys. A lot, a lot of guys don't stay up there yeah, because of the weather, but. Uh, uh, it, it's good to see Lip and, and Roland James and uh, Steve Grogan. I, I used to have a golf tournament, and all those guys used to come to my golf tournament. And so we're, we're still we're still we're still friends today. I interviewed Steve Grogan probably eight or nine years ago. I got to go find that link to that interview. And oh man, he's a humble guy, isn't he? And just yes, he is. He, he he's very humble. I I, I remember I, I was telling uh, I had a golf tournament in my hometown in Ping An, which is like a it's like a six hour drive. Uh, uh, from from New England, from from Boston, and uh, and and I, I I usually fly a man for for some reason. Uh, Steve couldn't get on the plane, but for uh, yeah, for some reason on the flight that I I need him get on, and he drove for six hours <laughs> to to come to come, just to come play in my tournament. And so you know, just that's the type of guy he is. Um, just a good friend and a great player, a great uh, uh, man. He was he was a he was, he was a baller, man. He, 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 I, I'm going to tell you, he was the reason, another reason why we went to the Super Bowl that year because of what he did uh, coming in, replacing uh, Eason uh, when Eason got hurt. And that's the big thing that Grogan did was, again, the whole uh, Dr. Heck, Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type thing that you're doing <laughs> with the NFL today. I remember that completely. You know, I'm a Pittsburgh guy, Pittsburgh Steeler fan through and through. Remember that Patriots year. Remember the Bears year. Wow, that that was that was pretty amazing to be. Now, Greg, you you told me you stopped watching sports as I have. I just at least keep track of what's happening in sports. <laughs> but you, because he's such a busy entrepreneur, uh, you know, when you a big company. Now, Greg, tell me flat out, you know, were you a Patriots fan at that time? Do you remember that? Yeah, I, I was a Patriots time fan back then for sure. I was I was just out of out of college, you know, 84, 85. and I remember. I remember when you guys played that game against Miami Dolphins and I had this basketball goal outside the backyard attached to the garage. And I'm like, all right, if I get 10 in a row, that means the Patriots are going to win. You know? <laughs> and, and I got the 10 and then you won, <laughs> but it wasn't me, but it was you. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, go, go figure. What happens? It's amazing. So that was the year. Was it? Was that eighty-five Marino? You guys beat him, or was that? Yeah, this, oh, yeah wow. that was Marino. Marino was oh. there then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yep. that's yep. that's got to be for sure. So life after football. That's a challenge. Life, life after football. My, my, I'm I know, I'm pretty sure you guys know my story. I I got a I I got when I was playing in the league. I got addicted to painkillers, and I and I, I see. I don't know the whole story, Tony. So I got yeah. I got addicted to the painkillers, and I got the opportunity to uh, write a book. It's called Broken Road, turning my nice. mess turning my mess into a message. You know. I made a mess, man. I, um, uh, just to tell you the little story uh, on it, and um, my I tell kids all the time, you're, you, uh, one of the keys of your success is the choices that you make. And so um, my third year, I think, was in the league. I had a great year. Um, but at the beginning of the season, I, I got cracked ribs. And uh, and so I, I have an opportunity to to sit down and rest my ribs and maybe give somebody else an opportunity to take my job, or I can start taking these painkillers and stay on the field. And uh, I made the choice to taking the painkillers, and I stayed on the field. And I played that year with, with uh, well, not the whole year, but half the year with cracked ribs. But uh, I got addicted to painkillers, mm. and and so uh, and, it, and it was easy to get. You know, the trainers were giving us. You know, that's that was one of the things that you know how it was back then. 
trainers give you the painkillers and you take the painkillers and everything's fine. And you get the shot before the game and you get the shot at halftime. And, uh, you know, after the, after the, all the stuff wears off and now you got to take all these painkillers <clears throat> to go to sleep. And I got hooked. I got hooked on them, and I was taking painkillers to go to sleep, and I was taking painkillers to wake up uh, and to start my day and keep going. And I got addicted to painkillers, and and uh, then I started. Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you this: I, one of the guys on the team. Because here, here's my story. I grew up in the church. <laughs> we went to church every Sunday, and so I knew about God. And my father was a deacon of the church. My mom sang in, sang in the choir, and so. Uh, all those years, I never drank. I never, I never did anything, and I was that, I was that kid that that never experienced anything, anything like that, uh, until I, I got to the league. And once that happened, um, I, you know, I started using marijuana because the marijuana, it would, it would calm my nerves down a little bit, and it would, it would not make me throw up because the painkillers were. I was taking so many painkillers, it was making me nauseated. And so, uh, the marijuana I started smoking marijuana. Then it led to cocaine and 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 I started and one of the things that I tell kids all the time uh who you surround yourself with who you who you surround yourself with tells a lot about what you're doing and so I started to surround myself with you know guys that I can get uh painkillers from and drugs from and uh, it, it got to a bad scene and uh you know I I, I heard a lot of people I messed up a lot of things I could have played a lot longer um could have done a lot better on the field uh, but uh, it was it was that choice that I made of just that choice that, and I didn't think it was a bad choice. I thought it was a good choice to stay on the field, but it actually turned out to a, to be a bad choice for me. And I'm not blaming it on anybody. I made the choice to do that. But here's the key to it all: uh, I, I got the opportunity to write a book and uh, started a foundation and uh, started helping a lot of kids. And the crazy thing about all this is my little town that I that I grew up in. It had a, a, a heroin. I, I didn't. I never used heroin before, but you know, opi opioids it, it, addiction in that town was just crazy, man. And, and so I went back to went back home and started the foundation there, and, and you know, tried to help help people as much as I can in my little small town that you never thought would be. Uh, uh, kids were dying. They were actually dying in that little small oh, town. Yeah. And so it, it it was crazy how God. Uh, let me go back to my own town and, and maybe save some lives and uh, help a lot of kids. And uh, we, the golf, we used to do golf tournament for once, once the pandemic hit, the golf tournament kind of faded away and I'm kind of getting old now and I'm retiring. <laughs> Can't travel as much as I want, <laughs> but, uh, but, but the book is doing great. Uh, got an opportunity to go on Steve Harvey show and, uh, you know, just, just, you know, it's, I just want to help as many people as I can, uh, because, you know, I, I, I got an opportunity to play a uh, sport that, man, that I, I just love doing and, 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 and I made some mistakes and, but I, I just want the kids to know that even, even when you make mistakes, you still can help people. And, and, and that's what I want to do. I want to help as many people as I can. All right. Greg has this uh, you have two questions. I'm sure one to follow up with them and then your final question. Yeah. Well, so quick follow up. So, so like me and others, you know, you're probably a little bit upset about how the country is allowing marijuana to be <laughs> sold basically at the grocery store. Right. You know, and, and these gummies and all this stuff. And you, you said it pretty, pretty plainly that the marijuana lets other stuff. And I've always believed that. So yeah, it, it's a little heartbreaking to know that that's happening. Yeah, I mean that's that's where that's where we're at now, though, man. It's just it's and it's I, and it's going to get worse. I I I don't see it getting any better. So, but again, and that's what you, I talk about in the book. It's all about the choices that you make. You got to just got to my got to make good choices and and just try to to, to surround yourself with good people. Um, the, the the more successful people you surround yourself with, the more successful you can become. Yeah, perfect. Well, Tony, I have I have a question that I love to ask all my guests. Um, what's the most important thing in life you've ever learned? Wow, <laughs> it, it, it's it's a that's a good question. What the most the most important? There's so many of them. I know. Uh, there's so many of them. I, I think one of the things that, that that stick with me is is uh 
is making sure that 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 you tell your family and you let your family know and you let people that you know even even if you're if they're your friends to let them know that you know you care let them know that you know you you sometimes you think about them and i, I think that's that's the thing about you know you know give me give me give me my roses now and they'll give them to me when i'm dead and, and you know I, I i'm a big family guy i i i I'm, i got a big family right now i i got i've, I've got 14 grandkids and wow. i got another i got another one on the way <laughs> so I, I, I love family, and I and my biggest thing for me is is is, is family, and I, and I think one of the things that you want to make sure is is that make sure you you know your family knows that you love them and you care about them, and and not just them. I think you know this, this crazy time uh, time that we live in, and you know we got black against whites, Democrats against Republicans. It, it, there's so so much hate. I, I, and that, I know that's a strong word, but it's it's so much division. Yeah. And we, if we could all start, you know, just you know, just caring about people. I don't care what color you are; <laughs> you're a human being, man. I, and I and I care about you. And so uh, that's the thing, man. We we just got we got to love more in this in, in this time that we're in, and and, that, and that's what I do now. I'm I, I'm I'm living my best life right now, man. Um, I, I got a great wife, and great family. And, uh, it couldn't be better. <laughs> so it's a great it's a journey for sure. Best place people can find the information on you, Tony. Where can they go? You can go to uh, you can go to Facebook and hit me up if you want to get if you want to get the book. You, you can go to Amazon. They have the book on Amazon. You won't get it signed, uh, but if you uh, hit me up, just like you hit me on, on Facebook, if you hit me up on Facebook and and, and just. Uh, uh, or 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 Instagram, uh, I'm on there. Uh, not a lot, but I'm on there some. And just uh, message me, and I can get the book to you. I get, even get it signed and everything for you. And and um, uh, it's it's even cheaper when you get it from me than you get it from Amazon. <laughs> ah, see, there you go, Tony. For sure, so, for sure. Yeah. Appreciate you coming by. It was such a great uh, honor to have you on the show. And and you hear about the Patriots and really talk about specifically going through those struggles to overcome and find your life because all of us make mistakes and yep. through those mistakes, that's the only way we grow as human beings is, is going, is going through those trials and tribulations to become the person that we are today. So thanks again. And, 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 and I think the key to that, once you go through those different trials and tribulations and things that you go through, make sure you go and help somebody else with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I think it's all about. You go through something, now you can help somebody else go through that same thing. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. it. Thanks, Tony. All right, guys. All right, guys. That was Celebrity Interviews live from the Grotto with Greg Hanna. Guys, take care.